It's King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the North Country, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. King, King, on, you husky! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the greedy race for riches. Now back to the days of the gold rush when Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, King, battled through storm and snow to preserve law and order as they met the challenge of the Yukon. Zeke Taylor was in his late 50s, but like thousands of others, had come to the Klondike to seek his fortune. He had filed a claim on Wolf Creek in rather an isolated section. It wasn't a rich claim, and Zeke had to work hard for the little gold he took out of it. Two other prospectors lived near him, and one day when he and Jake Rath, his neighbor, were taking a shortcut to their cabins from the trail to Dawson, they learned about another. We should save about two or three miles this way, Jake. It sure is shorter than the trail we've been using. Hope we don't get lost. Someone's been going this way. Maybe Bill Kramer found this shortcut before we did. Ah, uh, Bill would have told us about it. He takes the same trail we've been taking, I know. Say, Jake, look. There's a little cabin over there behind them trees. You see it? There's smoke coming out of the chimney. Uh, golly, you're right. I didn't know there was another living soul within miles of here besides you and Bill Kramer. Let's go over and see who lives there. He sure is far away from everything. He's probably an old trapper. I don't see why he'd pick this spot to live if he's a prospector. Bet he'll be glad to see us. Nobody would find him except by accident. I could use something hot to drink. I'm cold. I'm sure glad we came this way. It'll save us miles. In this cabin at a halfway point between us and the trading post, it'll make it pretty nice. Look, someone's opening the door of the cabin. <laughs> Must have seen us coming through the window. Hello there. You get out of here. What did he say, Jay? I thought he said get out of here, but I guess I heard wrong. Get away from here, I tell you. Hey, look, he's pointing a gun at you. Well, I'll be... If that ain't a welcome for you. Get away from here, I tell you. Shut up, you old walrus. We're going past your house. We ain't bothering you. Now, maybe you know I mean business. Why, you dirty... Where's my gun? I'll show that old crack. Don't shoot him, Don't shoot him. He just shot his gun in the air. He's a little crazy, I guess. A little. He's as bad as a belfry. I ought to put him out of his misery. Nobody would ever find it out. No, Jake, no, Jake. Now, come on, we'll circle this place so he'll know we aren't going near his cabin. When we tell Bill Kramer about this shortcut we found, we better warn him about old Santa Claus. Say, let's stop at Bill's on the way home. Maybe he's heard about this old duck. All right. I'll sure be glad to get in the warm cabin. I hope Bill has some warm food. Bill! You home? Well, well, come on in, boy. We're freezing. I'll fix you some hot soup. Well, yeah, thanks, dear. Uh, this pack sure is heavy. Wish we had enough money to buy a dog. Yeah. You know? I sure hate this business of packing our own grub. The rate I'm taking gold out of that claim of mine, I'll be packing on my back the rest of my life. <laughs> Same here. Well, at least we found a shortcut today. Saves us about three miles. Except there's a little obstacle in the path. A crazy old galoot with long white hair and a beard. He lives in a cabin hid away behind some trees, and when we come along, he took a pot shot at us to keep us from calling on him. Say, I wonder if that's the old geese they were asking me about the last time I was in Dawson. What did they say about him? They said there was a crazy man lived back in the hills around here somewhere. Guess he has to go to Dawson once in a while for supplies. They call him Scorpion Sam. Scorpion Sam, huh? Well, it sure is a perfect name for him. Uh, poor old fella. He's crazy, all right. So, fool. You should have let me plug him, Zeke. I had a perfect right to after he took that shot at us. Oh, he didn't shoot at us. He fired in the air. Better not try that with me. I'll hang him up by the whiskers. Me neither. Zeke, you're too soft-hearted. If Bill had been with me today, we wouldn't have to worry about taking that shortcut anymore. I don't hanker to get a load of buckshot in me every time I pass that lunatic's cabin. But you can't kill people. You ain't been up here as long as we have, Zeke. Sometimes people have to take the law in their own hands. Well, I guess I feel kind of sorry for Scorpion Sam. Maybe the loneliness made him that way. Hmm. Do you mind living alone? Why, sometimes. Got any family, Zeke? Yep, yeah, back in Seattle. 
I got a married daughter and a little granddaughter. Why'd you come way up here? I lost all my money, and I, I didn't want to be a burden on my family. I thought maybe I'd strike it rich up here. Well, Zeke, I sure hope you don't turn out like Scorpion Sam. Zeke Taylor was very curious about Scorpion Sam. When he took the shortcut to the Dawson Trail, he made a wide detour around the old man's cabin, but he still tried to catch a glimpse of him. Then one day, as he neared Sam's cabin, he noticed that no smoke came out of the chimney. And then he saw the door swinging back and forth in the wind. Cautiously, he drew near. He thought he heard a faint groan from within and peered inside. Scorpion Sam's voice whipped out at him. Who are you? Who are you snooping around in here? Well, I'm a neighbor of yours. I didn't see any smoke coming out of your chimney and your door was open. Why are you in bed with no fire? Are you sick? You don't think I'd be laying here if I wasn't, do you? Shut that door. Yeah. What's wrong with you? I got a gun under this blanket. Try and rob me and I'll shoot no, you. No, I'm not going to rob you, you old crackpot. If I don't build up your fire, you're going to freeze to death. What happened to you? I fell. Hurt my leg. Maybe it's broke, but that don't mean that I'm helpless. I can protect myself and my property. I'm not I... interested in your property. You'd better let me look at your leg. Not till you build a fire in that stove. Think I'm going to put my leg out in this cold? All right, I'll build a fire first. Bet the only reason you come in here is to snow. Well, that's not why I'm staying here. You want me to go away and let you die of starvation? Well, you might warm up some of that soup on the top of the stove. I suppose that's another reason you come. You want to be fair. <laughs> yeah, you're the most cantankerous old cockroach I ever saw. Yeah. I don't want any of your food. I got plenty of food in my pack. You have? What you got? Oh, so now you're interested, huh? When did you eat last? I don't see as that's anybody's business but mine. Well, would you do me the favor of telling me when you fell down? You know, since you're so curious, it was yesterday. But I ain't helpless. I've had this gun on you ever since you come in. Well, now, that's just dandy. You uh, keep that gun on me while I fix you some food. This fire will be going in a minute. And, and be sure you keep holding that gun on me while I fix your leg. Yeah, shucks, you ain't fooling me with that fancy talk. You're darn tootin' I'll keep the gun held on you. I don't trust nobody, you hear? I don't trust nobody. <laughs> Zeke Taylor stayed with Scorpion Sam until he was well, but got nothing but abuse for his trouble. Sam often seemed as if he wanted to be friendly, but just couldn't bring himself to do it. After he was better, Zeke saw him occasionally, but Scorpion Sam was always the same. It was late in the following spring when Bill and Jake were returning from Dawson with Zeke when they suddenly saw black smoke coming up through the trees near Sam's cabin. They hurried to it. Hey, boys, that Sam's cabin is burned. Ain't no use hurrying. It's burned to the ground. It sure is. Nothing left but the floor. Uh, I wonder where Scorpion Sam is. Maybe he was in it. I hope he wasn't burned. Why you like that old Kaja beats me? He was the sour... Look, man. right there in the middle of the floor. He was burned. Oh, Scorpion Sam's body. He must have suffocated before he could get out. Poor old fella. Well, come on, we'd better bury him. Look out, don't walk on that floor, Zeke. Those boards are burned, they won't hold you. <coughs> See what they tell you. Well, I, I'm not hurt. My foot just went through the floor. I, it, what's this? What are you looking at? Here, in this hole where my foot went through. Something shiny. Shiny? Let's see. What? Why, they're nuggets. One of the bags is busted. And there's more bags. Wait till I get one. Scorpion Sam with gold hidden under his floor. Look at these. That loony old miser. Living way out here like this when he had enough money to live wherever he wanted to. It's a fortune. Nobody knew he had it. That's why he was always worried when strangers came around. There's no sign of a claim around here anywhere. I bet he had a claim somewhere else. And brought the gold here and hid it. Divided three ways, we'd have enough money to be along for quite a while. It's an idea, Jake. 
Nobody dreamed he had this. But maybe he has some relatives somewhere. We'd better inquire. Don't be a fool. He never said anything to you about relatives, did he? Well, he'd never tell me anything about himself. I, I don't even know his right name. I doubt that anybody does. Anyway, we ain't bothering to find out. Are you with us, Zeke? Or do we divide this two ways instead of three? No, it isn't right. We ought to find out if... Ah, wake up, Grandpa. With this money, you could buy yourself a trading post or store. It'd be better than pen and gold, especially on claims like ours. We're dividing this money whether you like it or not. You're taking your share, so you can't squawk about it, see? I suppose if nobody claimed it, the gold might go to the government. If we hadn't found it, it wouldn't go anywhere. But I know where it's going now. Maybe I could buy a trading post or a general store. Now you're talking, Zeke. Come on. Help us get this gold out of here. It was three years later, and Zeke Taylor's trading post did a thriving business in a small settlement of Miner's Creek, far south of Dawson City. Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police liked Zeke and never failed to stop there for the night whenever he patrolled the district. One summer evening, when the Mountie entered Zeke's store, he found the old man very upset. Sergeant, I, I just got a letter from Seattle. My, my daughter and her husband were in a fatal accident. Oh, I'm sorry, Zeke. I'm, I'm the only one left to take care of Sally. Sally? She's my little granddaughter. She's only seven. Oh. Well, do you think you'll go back to Seattle? Well, I don't know what I could do to support her there. Uh, do you think it's out of the question to have her here in the Yukon? Why, no, Zeke, if it's possible to get her up here. You see, a friend of mine in Seattle is coming up to the Yukon. He, he isn't coming up this far, but he says he could bring her as far as Whitehorse. He'll be there in about a month. I'll be in Whitehorse about that time. Would you like to have me meet her and bring her back here for you? Would you do that for me, Preston? I could trust you to take good care of her. You see, I'm getting pretty old to take a trip like that. She... She probably won't remember me at all. Well, she couldn't have picked a finer man for a grandfather. I'm not as good as you think I am, Sergeant. Well, I've never found anything wrong with you. You're kind and honest, and everybody trusts you. Sergeant, there's something I've got to tell you. Yes? It's about... Good evening, Zeke. Hello, Sergeant. Hello, Jim. How are you? Yeah. Well, there's gold for you to put in your safe for me, see? Uh, there they are. Well, that claim of yours is really paying off, Jim. You're done tootin' it is. I'm sure glad Zeke got himself that big iron safe. And we all let him keep our gold in it until we're ready to take it into Selkirk. Oh? Do all the miners around here do that? Well, most of them do. This is a good place for it. Nobody can open it without knowing the combination unless they blasted it open. And I... I doubt that there are any expert safe crackers in this country. It's quite a responsibility for you, though. Oh, everybody knows Zeke's honest. We never worry about our gold when it's in Zeke's safe. And nobody knows the combination except him. Safe enough with Zeke, all right. Well, guess I better get going. Come on, King. <laughs> It was almost two months later, and Zeke was nervous and excited as he took two bags of gold nuggets from Jim Peters for storage in his safe. Uh, uh, Jim, you're sure getting rich. You've got more gold stored in this safe than any prospector around. Yeah, yeah that claim of mine is sure producing. Uh, uh, wait now, I'll give you a receipt. Uh, uh, your hand's shaking. You're so excited about that granddaughter of yours coming, you can hardly write. I thought Sergeant Preston would get here today. I hope they didn't strike any bad weather. You know, having a granddaughter to look after, well, uh, it scares me a little. Uh, I, I'm glad I was able to get that cabin at the edge of the town. Uh, it wouldn't be right to put her here in that little back room we used to say. Uh, she'll like a cabin. I, I hope I can raise her right. Uh, to tell you the truth, I, I envy you a little. Maybe I can help you. Say, uh, do you know any fairy tales, Jim? Uh, I see. Uh, it seems there was one about uh, Cinderella and, and the three bears. No, that, uh, that was Goldilocks, wasn't it? Hmm? Well, I see. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, I guess it was. And, and then there was the one about Red Riding Hood. Uh, well, we better not tell her that one. She's liable to try talking to one of these timber wolves up here. <laughs> but that's Preston now. She's here, Jim. She's here. Hello. That's you, Sergeant. Come on, Sally. Hey, now hurry in. It's cold. It's cold out here. King's coming in with us. Well, Zeke, here's your grandchild. Sure. Sure, this is Sally. Come here, child. Gosh, ain't she pretty? You're my grandpa. Yep, I'm your grandpa. And you sure grown since I last saw you. I didn't remember your nice white whiskers. <laughs> didn't wash them special for you. <laughs> you were too little to remember much about me. Here, I'll give you a nice big hug. Stop it, King. Stop it. Sally's all right. Zeke's not hurting her. King and Sally got to be very good friends on the way up here, and he's afraid you're going to hurt her, Zeke. No, oh, I can't blame him much for worrying. Seeing a hug a whiskery old walrus like Zeke. Yeah, no. <laughs> he's my grandpa, King, and I haven't seen him for years and years. Sally, you haven't met Jim here. He's an old friend of mine. I guess you better call him Uncle Jim. Hello, Uncle Jim. Welcome to Miner's Creek, Sally. Well, I guess we better get you home right now. Where is home? I used to stay in the back room here at the store, but when I heard you was coming, I got a little cabin at the edge of town. I uh, bought your dog sled, too. Maybe the sergeant will help you find the dog to pull you around, eh? I sure will. Oh, sergeant, <laughs> if you could just get me a dog like King. Well, uh, there aren't many like him around, but I tell you what I will do, Sally. Now, I'm going to be around here for a while tomorrow. And we'll hitch King to the sled. Let him give you a ride to try it out. Oh, that'll be wonderful. Her baggage is all on my sled, Zeke. I'll take it over to your cabin now, if you're ready. Uh, would you like to bunk in with me for the night, Sergeant? Why, yes, Jim, I would. I'll come right over as soon as I take Sally and Zeke home. Well, come on, Sally. Let's go. The following morning, Sally was aglow with excitement as she sat on her sled. Sergeant Preston had hitched King to it. And the great dog seemed to enjoy it as much as the child. He started off carefully at her command. I'm King. Oh, oh, yeah. Be careful, honey. I will. I'm King. Don't worry about it, Zeke. King will be careful. Come on in, Shaggy Day. I want to talk to you about something. I thought you looked worried, Zeke. I got something I want to tell you. I had to see you alone. You sit down, sit down. What's wrong? <laughs> I uh, I want to pay back some money that I owe somebody, and I don't know how to find them. Maybe I can help you. Who are they? Did you ever hear of an old man they call Scorpion Sam? Scorpion Sam? Seems to me I heard something about him in Dawson a long time ago. You probably heard he burned the death in his cabin. Oh, yes, that was it. I heard some men talking about him one time when I was in a trading post in Dawson. The only one who knew him was the owner of the store... He used to come in there for supplies. Did they say anything about him having any heirs? I can't remember now. Seems to me there was something about a letter of his at the trading post. They were laughing about it. Said Sam was crazy and imagined he had a lot of gold or something. Would you be going up to Dawson soon? Why, yes. As a matter of fact, I'm leaving for there tomorrow morning. Be back in about a week. Would you f mind finding out about it for me? Be glad to, Zeke. You see, I, I owe the heirs some money and I... I want to pay it back. Oh, uh, did you borrow it from Scorpion Sam? You might call it that. I'll, I'll tell you the whole story, Sergeant, when you get back from Dawson. Hello there, Zeke. Yes? Jake. Bill. Wait. What are you doing here? Mm, it's a nice trading post you got here with Scorpion Sam's money. Hey, please don't talk about Scorpion Sam if any customers come in. <laughs> you think we're crazy? That's why we waited till the store was empty. Ah, you look pretty prosperous, Zeke. I'm making a good living. Jake and I lost our money. Guess we should have bought a claim or a store instead of trying to double it fast on a roulette wheel. I'm sorry you lost your money. We thought maybe you'd lend us some, seeing as how you're doing so well. I hear you've got a safe full of gold. Well, it isn't my gold. It belongs to the miners around here. I just keep it in the safe for them. 
Uh, I'm sorry, but I can't let you have any money. I, I just bought a cabin. It'd and be I... too bad if the story leaked out about how you got enough to get a start. They might not let you keep that granddaughter of yours. Get out of here. That gold belongs to friends of mine, people who trust me. You're not getting any of it. There's your customer. Now get out. We're going, Zeke, but you'd better think it over. It was evening, almost a week later, when Jake and Bill stood across the street from Zeke's trading post. The temperature was dropping rapidly, and Bill's face was getting numb. He swung his arms to keep the blood circulating. Gosh, Jake, I can't stand here much longer. Temperature's dropping fast. I'm getting numb all over. You won't have to wait much longer. Everybody's getting home as quick as they can. This is the weather I've been waiting for. Mm. There goes the last customer out of Zeke's store. He's alone. Come on, he'll be closing the place. If he won't give us the combination of the safe, maybe we could blow it up. The place next door is too close. Don't worry, he'll give it to us. I hope this plan of yours works. There's only one way to find out. Well, I'm sorry, boys. I have to get home right away. I... Jacob Bailey, it's you, eh? Yeah, it's us. We want to see you for a minute, Zeke. Hey, tomorrow. Hey, come back tomorrow. I've got to get home to Sally. Yeah, Thanks. the temperature is about 50 below right now, and it's falling fast. That cabin of yours better have a big fire in it, or it'll be mighty uncomfortable. What, what do you want? Get in the back room, Zeke. Bring that lantern, Bill, so there won't be any light in the store. Right. We don't want any customers disturbing us. I'll get it. Come on, Zeke. I won't get in the back room. I have to get home. Maybe you need persuading. A gun. Is this a hole up? I'll tell you when we get in the back room. All right, I'll go with you. But please hurry. I've got the lantern. Shut the door, Bill, so the light won't show out there. I'll put something over that window, Bill, just in case someone gets curious. Sure. Here's a blanket. Jake, what do you want? I have to get back to Sally. Sure you do, see. If you don't, she'll freeze. We dropped in your cabin before we came. She was all alone, and the fire in that stove was getting low. Let me go, Jake. I'll give you money. All you have to do is to give us a combination of your safe. What? Are you crazy? I won't give it to you. You won't, eh? Remember, Zeke, it's 50 below zero. The mercury's dropping fast, and we got plenty of time to wait. Maybe it'll take an hour or two for that cabin to get cold enough for that granddaughter of yours to freeze to death. But as I said, we got plenty of time. Why, well, you dirty cowards using sanity. You wouldn't. Oh, freeze me a bad death. She'll just go to sleep. She'll probably climb into bed to keep warm and uh, then go to sleep. But without a fire, she'll never wake up. You dirty rats. Using a little girl. Shut up. All you have to do is give us that combination. I won't give it to you. All the miners trust me with their savings. They're all my friends. I won't give it to you. Sergeant Preston, returning to Miner's Creek from Dawson, had to pass Zeke's cabin on the trail. The temperature had dropped to 60 below, and the Mountie hurried his team and trotted behind the sled to keep warm. King, running ahead, turned off the trail and started toward the cabin where he knew he'd find the little girl he liked so well. Sergeant Preston stopped the team. Well, King, where are you, Husky? Come back here, King. We can't stop now. Well, I suppose I'd better go in or you won't be happy. King, oh, Sergeant Preston, help me. Sally, what's wrong? didn't come home and, and I couldn't keep the fire going. Oh, you poor child. You're freezing. Here, hop into bed. I'll put King up here beside you. He'll keep you warm till I get a fire going. Then we'll find your grandfather. Come close to me, King. Oh, he feels nice and warm. Now, I'll put these covers over you. Now, you stay there. I'll have this cabin warm in a few minutes. I wonder where Grandpa is. He said he'd be home early today because it was so cold and... And then he didn't even come home to supper. Well, something must be wrong at the store. Don't worry, Sally. I'll find him. Leaving his dog team at Zeke's cabin, Sergeant Preston took King and walked to the trading post. There was no light in the store, but the Monty entered quietly with his big dog walking silently beside him. And then he saw the streak of light under the door of the back room. Quietly, he crept over to it and listened. 
Inside the room, Zeke sat facing Jake, who held a gun in his hand. It's getting cold in here, even with a fire going. Your cabin is almost as cold as it is outside by this time. Your granddaughter is half froze now. Please let me go, Zeke. I'll give you all my own money. Everything in the cash box. We ain't interested in chicken feed. We want the combination of that safe. And if I give it to you, you'll probably kill me anyway, so I couldn't tell who robbed me. Not necessarily, Zeke. Because if you did and we were caught, we'd tell about the time we all split Scorpion and Sam's money three ways. You wouldn't dare tell. So now, come on. What's that combination? Drop that gun by under arrest. I'm out of here. You do it. Get out of here. Take him off. Take him off him, boy. I'll take that gun. Uh, sure, you pissed you. You just got here in town. You ain't got a thing on us, Mountie. We were just sitting here talking. Zeke won't make a charge against us, will you, Zeke? Yes, I will. I was going to tell Sergeant Preston about Scorpion Sam anyway. There's no need of that, Zeke. I overheard the conversation. Your men were holding Zeke here against his will with the intention of robbing him while his granddaughter froze to death. I've got to get to her. She's all right, Zeke. I just left her and the cabin's warm. So you heard the conversation. And if you arrest us, you have to arrest Zeke, too. You men admitted taking Scorpion Sam's gold. So we did. But so did Zeke. If you don't arrest him, we'll testify that you're protecting him. He got his third of it. You're right, Sharky. That's what I was going to tell you when you came back from Dawson. Oh, unless you want to arrest Zeke, maybe you'd be smart to let us go. Seeming he's a friend of yours. Zeke hasn't committed a crime. He certainly has. Zeke asked me to find out about Scorpion Sam when I went to Dawson. He said he wanted to pay back some money. Yeah, he was just talking. I talked to Andy Mason, who owns the trading post, where Scorpion Sam used to get his supplies. He left a letter with Andy to be opened after his death. Letter? Andy opened it, and it said that everything he owned was to go to a man named Zeke. He didn't even know your last name, Zeke. You mean Scorpion Sam really liked me? Oh, as much as he liked anybody. Andy said they looked for you, but... You'd left the country. You see, there was nothing of Scorpion Sam's left since the cabin had burned down. So they didn't bother trying to trace you. Then that gold, I, I didn't steal it. It was mine. All you did was divide your own fortune three ways. See, please don't press charges against us. We promised to leave the country. That's enough out of you. You're both under arrest. Watch them, King. The case of Scorpion Sam is closed. <laughs> Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature, is brought to you each week at this time, and all characters, names, and incidents used are fictitious. Listen again next week to another exciting adventure during the days of the gold rush. L. Prow speaking. This program came to you from Detroit. How tough can a guy get? If you're speaking of Ross Dolan, he's one of the toughest private eyes on the market when it comes to handling a denizen of the underworld. But Dolan, who's the hero of ABC's exciting Saturday night thriller, Ideal in Crime, doesn't rely entirely on brawn to smash a crime case. Dolan's IQ is way up there in the A1 category. He's smarter and shrewder than the cleverest gang leader. William Gargan, popular stage and screen actor who plays the role of Detective Ross Dolan, fits the part like a glove. You've probably seen Gargan do some pretty fancy celluloid sleuthing. Well, Gargan is just as good on the air and makes Ross Dolan come alive as he should. An easygoing guy who can turn hard as nails. Be sure to join Ross Dolan when he takes a crack at another crime case on I Deal in Crime. It will be heard tonight over most of these ABC stations. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.